Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made my 18th century stays following the red threaded pattern. <laughs> All right, welcome back. So um, to get started kind of with this project, I just wanna let you know that I have made a few other 18th century stays before. I've um, followed the American Duchess um, 18th century stay pattern, and I've also followed the simplicity pattern that existed decades ago. I purchased it back in, I think like, 2014 for my Roca Cobell and um, I felt it was $40 online it was I had to buy it from like another like a third party it wasn't it was no longer in print um, I found out like a year later that they made it available again I was so mad but anyway um, so I followed a few uh, I've actually this is my fifth pair of stays that I've made um, the reason I'm making a new pair of stays, uh, there's a couple reasons. One, I've gained a bit of weight and um, I definitely want to have a pair of stays that I can build upon for the next year or two. Um, the second reason is because I really like supporting um, artists that I follow. So almost everything in the that I, that is uh, in this project was um like i pre-had like it was a stash project the only thing that i actually purchased for this was the binding and the lace the the oh and the grommets so i think i spent a total of ten dollars um on this uh, everything else was in my stash i thought it would be a fun small project um and again i really enjoyed how different the stays from Red Threaded were then from American Duchess. And I like both of these companies a lot. So again, it was just a way for me to support another um, artist that I like and I admire, but also get to kind of like see how somebody else makes these. Um, I learned a lot, like it was way different from the previous patterns I've made. Stays fit me better than any stays I've ever had in my life. Actually stay tuned to the end of this video so you can watch me do a push up in the stays. Okay, so this was a long intro. I'm really sorry. Let's just get straight to the video and the construction. Um, this is a part how to part vlog, kind of like the last video that you saw me do on Elsa where I do a lot of like, this is how you do this, this is how you do that. And then I kind of check in and I'm like, so this didn't work. And now I have to rethink it. So I kind of throw a little bit of that in there. I hope you guys like this style and I hope you like this video. Please follow, subscribe. Those are the same thing. Wow. Please give the video a thumbs up, comment below, subscribe to my channel, eh, eh, eh. and uh, let's make a through 18th century stays. Yeah, let's do it. Cool. Awesome. All right. So for today's project, like you probably have already heard, we are going to be making red threaded stays. Um, they're 18th century corset stays. And I have my pile of paper here, um, as well as uh, this is going to be the cotton we use for lining. And this is um, duck canvas that I'm using for my mock-up. The mock-up portion of this and kind of like how to put together and transfer the pattern will be in a video that's um, a Patreon exclusive. So if that is something that you would like to see, um, it will be in my video tier on Patreon, uh, probably sometime around when this video comes out. Um, so definitely check that out if you need guidance on making a mock-up. What you guys will see in this video is more of a, um, uh, just a step-by-step -step how I actually make my stays. So let's do this. I'm so excited. I tried filming about two hours ago, but our power went out and I had some computer stuff I needed to do. So I just started cutting fabric. Um, and this is what I've got so far. So I'm going to show you really, really quick kind of what I'm doing here. This is my Cotill and um, I'm going to be marking all of my Cotill. And then this is um, the top fabric. This is a silk shantung. This is leftover from Stella Goza. There's a very little bit left and I just really love purple, obviously. Um, and I also just love this shade of purple and I'm trying to have all of the like undergarments I'll be making for the rest of the year be made out of stuff in my stash. So we're gonna use this as the top fabric. We It says to use cotton twill and I do not have any cotton twill. 
So I'm just gonna use cotton mock-up fabric, like quilter's cotton. It feels a little heavier than um, like my Kona cotton. So I'm gonna use that and I think it'll be fine. Um, so the next step is just gonna be to mark these. I need to cut literally everything, but um, the instructions say to cut it one, like one at a time versus on a fold, which I completely understand. This is the first time I've ever actually done this for a pattern, but I want it to fit perfectly. So um, I'm gonna be doing that. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I've already made <laughs> a major mistake. And that's the fact that, so here is the piece that we already marked, right? And then um, it's gonna have, it's gonna be flat lined with this, this silk and then lined before we actually sew on all the markings. So what I'm gonna do is I've pinned all of my pieces. I'm gonna just kind of janky cut them out like around them and then I will sew them onto the fabric, onto the silk and actually uh, flat line them and then trim them to be closer to, like trim them down to the actual pattern piece. Um, and I'll show you guys doing, me, my, myself doing that. And then we're going to actually do all of our markings on the top of the fabric. And I've been kind of flip-flopping with how I wanted to do this, but I like to top stitch my boning channels with the thread on top of my machine. That to me just makes the most amount of sense. So I'm going to do that. So the next like little clip you will see is probably me cutting these out and then I'll take them over and flatline them. So now to flatline my pieces, I'm sewing about a quarter of an inch away for on the cotill from the edge with a 2.5 millimeter stitch length. And as you can see, my fashion fabric is still very visible. So what I'll be doing is I'll be just sewing around the entire thing. And then once I'm done sewing all of the pieces, I will trim the um, back the silk and everything will line up perfectly versus not perfectly. I made sure to press every single piece um, before I trimmed away the extra silk. Now on the top side of my silk shantung, I am going to um, mark all of the markings, like the boning channels. I'm actually gonna hold off on marking the closures um, in the back just because I'm gonna I want to be more precise so I want to wait until everything is made but I will use my ruler to get my line straight and um, I will follow the lines on the pattern to uh, mark each and every individual piece that on these pieces where the next step says to stay stitch the curves and um, specifically this part of the curve right here where we're eventually gonna cut it and then put um, uh, binding on, I decided to just go ahead and do it now on this um, so that I can, even though like we still have to add the lining and stuff, so that I can have the stitch line visible um, and so that I already like kind of did two steps in one a little bit. Since I'm doing things already out of order, I might as well do a little bit more out of order. Look at that baby. Look at that baby. <laughs> Eva! Eva! Do you hear that tapping? That's her tail. <laughs> oh, goodbye! <laughs> So the instructions have you assemble the back and back side together and then the center front, side front, and side piece together. And you essentially have three different pieces that will be formed from there. And they also have you repeat this with the lining. So I end up just pinning all of it like at the same time to make things a little bit quicker. So in order to sew these pieces, um, it says to sew it on a 
three eighths of an inch seam allowance and then it tells you to reinforce it. Um, so I did this by just sewing it again at a three eighths of an inch seam allowance and I do this at a 2.5 millimeter stitch length for all of the seams. I also sew the lining to the straps at this time and I do this at 3 eighths of a seam allowance as well um, and I just kind of sew it like I did flat lining it. For the back panels I'm going to press the seam allowance open and I'm going to try to get this as absolutely flat as I can and then I go ahead and I will um, trim the little notch that they have you mark in the pattern and this eventually becomes uh, like makes it so that the pieces can be tabs or like better distinguished as tabs um, and then I'm also going to press open the seam allowance on the lining as well um, and then I will pin both the lining to the um, the top fabric coattail piece with the wrong sides of each together um, and I'm going to do this by starting by pinning the back seam um, together and then going into the boning channels, I'm going to pin through the boning channels. Now in the instructions, it says that pinning isn't the best, um, it's actually very difficult to do this technique and I personally don't find it difficult. It's specifically supposed to be difficult to sew around the pins and again like I don't really find it that difficult um, but if you decide that that's not the type of method that you would like to do you can alternatively um, get a basting some sort of like um, basting spray or uh, some you know witcher uh, witch stitch stitch witch I, I don't know I've never used it before but you know what I mean you can use something to um, kind of adhere the layers together versus um, using pins. Okay, so I took my piece over to my overlock machine and I actually searched the edge of both the longer piece, the, the center back piece, and also the side that's going to get connected to all the center pieces, so the side back piece. Um, and I just overlocked both sides of them and I'm about to press them or I just pressed them and now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do the, the step how it says in the instructions, folding the back panel in and pressing it down and then I will stitch the boning channel into it. Um, I prefer the overlock like using my overlock machine for this because it just has a uh, like more industrial type feel to it. It just feels cleaner and, and better and it's faster in my opinion. So I did this to both back pieces. All right, and now that everything is pinned and my edges are clean, it's time to um, sew on these boning channels, or uh, which are the markings that I drew on top of the fabric. As you can see, I go rather slow, and I will just take a pin out when I reach it, um, and I put a pin right in the center of the boning channel. Um, and I, again, like I didn't find it that difficult. Yeah, it was a lot slower than probably most people, but. Um, it meant I didn't have to buy a new product, so I'm happy with it. Okay, so I just pressed all the seams open for this, uh, the cotton front like pieces. And something I wanna just point out is that I'm gonna go and take it to my machine and sew as close as I can to these two sides um, up to the pin on both of these. I'm doing this because I found when I was making my mock-up that um, putting the bone that goes across the top here was incredibly hard. And in the instructions, it tells you to um, put the put that bone, that piece of boning, behind all of the others. So I feel like if I can just stitch this down, and this is the lining so it won't be seen on the top, if I can just stitch this down, I can just basically follow the, it and it should go in smoother than um, it did on my mock-up. So I'm gonna go do that. Um, and when we get to the boning step, we'll, we'll check in and kind of see if this worked. So now, just like I did with the back panels, I pressed my seams open. I clipped the little um, notches that you're supposed to clip uh, in the seams. And now I am pinning the lining to the top fabric with the wrong sides together and um, in the boning channels and getting it ready to sew all of these boning channels in.
place. Okay, so before I um, sew all of the boning channels um, uh, on the front piece, I'm just gonna talk a second about what I did. So I went in ahead and I overlocked the sides. I did it on both of them. Um, I did this because when I was putting together my mock-up, I had some weird issues or things I just didn't, I simply didn't understand. Um, and so later on when we go to construct, once this gets boned, we have to uh, sew together these two pieces. And there isn't like, uh, it was a little difficult for me to understand, like I said. So what I'm choosing to do is um, sew these pieces. And at that time too, when I sew these together, and press them open. Um, I'll probably also top stitch them down just so that they are nice and flat and they stay that way forever. I will also sew our um, tabs on here. I can't sew this on yet because there's a boning channel right here. Um, so once the bones and everything are in and this is sewn together, I will on this um, side, I will sew this together. At least that's my plan right now. And then when I go and then I'll hand stitch it down. So. That's my plan right now. Um, but now let's get all of this sewn down. And now I just take it one boning channel at a time to sew down the lining to the fabric. All right, so we basically have the entire base of this done. All of the boning channels are in. Um, I took some time to sew these panels together and now we're gonna just go and bone them. I had pre-cut all of the boning for my mock-up, um, and so basically what we're gonna do is I left it in the mock-up. We're gonna, I'm just gonna take each piece out and then I'm actually gonna trim them so that they have more of a, or I'm gonna file them down so that they have a curved edge and put them in their place. So that's where we're at. I'm gonna do that and then we can add these guys and, um, binding and grommets. So maybe a few more hours. Yay. All right, so now we're gonna try to get this one in um, and let's see how this goes. I really, really, really hope it works. Our goal is to um, obviously go behind all of these. Ooh, we made it through this first seam. Um, if you don't remember earlier in the video, I did stitch down these seams so that it would be a bit easier for me to get through. Everything except this one right here. So we're just gonna pick these. all it takes guys just one section for it not to work all right there Yee, look at that it made it all the way through okay so i've realized um by looking at the picture um that i wasn't supposed to add these until after i added the binding but whatever, I add them here. Basically, I sew just the 
Kotil and Silk Shantung piece down by machine, trying not to hit the boning. And then I will fold the cotton over and inside itself and hand stitch that down with a slip stitch and it's as simple as that. However, um, apparently you're not supposed to do it this way, so yeah. So before I start sewing, I need to preface this with saying that I watched um, Red Threaded's video on YouTube on how they do their binding, especially on the tabs, which makes me very, very nervous. Um, and they don't use pins at all. This is my fifth or sixth set of stays that I've ever made, and I've always used pins on the binding, and we're gonna try it uh, without using pins. We're gonna try it by going slow, and we are just going to hope for the best. So uh, this is going to be either a time lapse or just some, you know, com combination of videos of me struggling. Um, I will start off by saying that the first thing I learned is that they fold the binding over to the other side for their starting and then they stitch it on the other side folded like this. So basically it's wrapped around. Um, when I get to taking this off, I can show you, but um, here it goes. <laughs> um, so I'm using the Oliso Mini and I've turned it to the middle setting, like the two for this, because uh, this is a satin binding. Um, and honestly, what I've been doing, and this is, kind of inspired by the the video that red threaded made on how to do this but also kind of just my own way of doing this is um i've started by just folding back the binding as much as i can and you know pressing it and pressing it and pressing it and then um i bring it under so now we'll flip it under and i like make my decisions based off of you know like i'm gonna hand sew this down i will say that um, because I just, I was, I don't like, <laughs> um, machine sewing binding. I know that it looks so clean and nice, um, when Red Threaded does it. I just am not that proficient and this isn't really the time that I want to, this isn't the type of skill that I necessarily want to grow. Like I don't plan to make that many more 18th century stays. In order to um, be more precise with my markings for the uh, grommets, I'm just going to hole punch the actual pattern and then lay it over the piece it goes on and just mark it with my pencil through the piece. Uh, and that's how I do my marking. It was pretty easy. Um, and then I'll, I'll apply grommets as well, just like I would normally apply grommets. I'm not going to show footage of that because it requires me hamming, hamming, hammering on my table and um, that shakes the camera. So there's just no point in showing that. Um, so now let's do some final thoughts. Okay, so like I've said previously, I freaking love these. They fit so well. They're so comfortable. They, I think they look really good um, despite my binding. Like actually when I look at it now, I may, I don't hate my binding. It's not bad actually. Uh, it was a lot more difficult than I had expected. Now the moment you've all been waiting for. Let's see if I can do a push up.
thank you so much for watching this video. If you like more tutorials like this, make sure you subscribe to my channel, give it a thumbs up, comment, and share it with your friends.